the story would not have shape, taken shape except for the writer's center. Another time, I went to the Cape Air Museum and I saw some Marsden Hartley paintings. I decided to go to Dogtown to see where he had painted. In Dogtown, I found a place called Rainy Day Swamp. It's off the beaten path. It's hard to find. But it's a place of supreme tranquility and beauty. And it struck me that here in this place, here in Gloucester is where the beauty of the earth meets the beauty of the soul. It's a place where we all find a particular pleasure, a particular spiritual fulfillment. And that's what I want to preserve and protect as your next mayor. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, good evening, Your Honor. Fellow candidates, ladies and gentlemen, the answer to the first question is Rose Baker Senior Center and the Horribles Parade. <laughs> and that is my answer to that question. Okay, <laughs> Stefani. I think the most beautiful place I've ever seen was the uh, uh, Red Face Granite Cliff on Emerson Avenue. I used to walk by it hundreds of times, uh, especially the best times in a snowstorm because it has different depths of snow on all the different ledges. And then uh, the second place was I was an invited guest to the McNeil House. Uh, McNeil was, uh, Mrs. McNeil was a member of the Rockport Art Association. And I always enjoyed walking in the house because it was a big hallway and the staircase was to the left. And she had carpenters make her a little alcove underneath the stairs. And when you walked into her house, she would have like a little padded uh, bench she would sit on. And on an angle, she'd have a metal uh, easel with a fresh canvas with her paints to the left. But then to the right, she would have a wooden easel. And she would put like, because she was elderly and she couldn't get around, she would have like a postcard or a picture, and then she had like an architectural magnifying glass with lights. <clears throat> and then, and I would say, gee, uh, you don't actually paint from what you see. And she said, no, she would paint from a picture. And then she would spin the whole picture right off of that postcard or picture, which was usually a black and white photo of uh, boats. And I remember she used to paint after dinner. She would paint maybe 10 minutes if she wanted, uh, maybe sometimes an hour, but she never, never painted under pressure. She never had a deadline, and she painted for herself, which was different. I thought, I've seen other people paint for other people, and uh, I'll always remember her as uh, that little uh, studio under the stairs, with one easel on one angle and one easel on the other. And, uh, and of course, I, I talked to John Nestor. I told him I, I'm not an artist, but I am a patron of the arts, and I'll probably be interested in buying a uh, oil painting of that red face, sheer granite cliff on Emerson Avenue. Can I, can I take it? Thank you. Um, it is difficult to write to call. It's right to walk around with all that and that stuff. But um, everyone has different views and aspects. And But just if you hear a couple here today, it's amazing because we all appreciate the odds. I can say as a little girl growing up, I lived next to the UU church, so all the painters actually sat in there, which was amazing. But running in the hallways of the Sargent Street home, going to um, some of the museums, going to the library, going to Cape Ann Museum, being in some of the musicals at the Annis Palm Village and embracing the school systems and, and doing things. But my favorite things, too, is watching the children's eyes. See children build self-confidence. When they have their artwork, that is the most amazing thing to see a child, the joy in their face for doing something the first time. And they like working with paints, clay, singing, dancing, is the most amazing thing we can give a child because those are your future artists. And then, is my favorite, is my senior center. There is the end of your you could say your artists, they have their stories that they are now telling you in their quilts, their panels, their tiles, 
their lives are coming out of what they went through, and it's the most amazing thing because that is their sanctuary. You understand that when you are left alone and you're an artist, you're never alone because you can actually be alive at the senior center with all your work and stories, so it's amazing. So I love the beginning with the children, and I adore my seniors at the end because they tell us about the lives that they have passed. Thank you. Okay, very good. We certainly do have a, a vibrant community. Thanks. A vibrant our community. One of the problems with it is there's always so much to do you can have to decide. On any given weekend evening, there's just 25 things to do, so you can pick one. But I'll talk um, about some personal things that have affected me. First of all, you may know I'm a, a published children's author. I wrote a story about raising chickens well over 20 years ago and tried to get it published. Didn't have much luck, so I stuck it on a shelf. Fast forward 20 years, and suddenly backyard chickens is the hip thing to do. So I figured it's time to revive it. So I sought out a publisher, and I found an independent publisher in Cambridge. <coughs> we worked together to hire an illustrator, lay out the book, and in 2011, it was published. And I had the pleasure of reading it at the Soy Free Library, and also it was selected by the First Star Foundation as one of their books, and I got to read that along with a lot of other volunteers throughout the city schools. Now, the other thing is, I'm a musician. I started playing the guitar when I was about 12, switched to bass, and then when I was in high school, I started a band called The Wave, after a 30-year break, we recently got reunited, and in fact, we were playing at the block party on September 4th, and uh, I had hired another band, Moonraker, to play an event that I had booked, and they told me after the event, my bass player is moving out of town, can you fill in for a gig we have next week? So I played with them at Captain Carlos, next thing you know, I'm booked for three more gigs. So perfect timing, because I have absolutely nothing else going on. <laughs> so, uh, you know, coming at this from the point of view of a weekend warrior, I'm enjoying all of the pleasures of being an artist. I have absolutely no idea what it's like to, to deal with the pains for the working artist. But that job of the elected official is to do what we can to ease the pain and increase the pleasure. So that's what my goal is as your next mayor. Thank you.